Dr. Posa, what was the point of that media briefing yesterday? First of all, to to come out as the top six and uh, support our Secretary General in his uh, weekly presentations to the public and also field questions as individual uh, members of the collective where such que- questions are pinpointing at any one of us. So that is to expose ourselves to be questioned, interrogated, and commented upon. So we are able to also explain ourselves and explain the party and where it's going. So as a collective, we thought we are like a feast. Mm. Mm. I just wonder whether it, it was as a result of that speech at Wits University by Julius Malema where he uh, publicly attacked President Jacob Zuma, called him a dictator. No, you see that statement is not a statement anti so and so. It's deliberately a positive statement to call on our forces. Uh, and it says right at the opening that uh, we have observed during the past few weeks, not just at VET, VET included, uh, that uh, the people have been expressing themselves in a very reckless language, for example, uh, th- exchanging insults and uh, uh, expressing themselves in manners which would be interpreted as disrespectful. And uh, we say they uh, characterized as an ANC. Um, there's a way in which our constitution expects us to comport ourselves. And we felt, uh-uh, we need to talk now as a collective and say, let's interrupt this type of thing. And also there was an attempt to suggest that the officials of the ANC were, were divided. And of course, there's no basis for saying that. We thought, let's all go out and look uh, the media in the eye, look the country in the eye, look the world in the eye, and engage any question. Doesn't right. matter what it is. Looking us in the eye again, uh, part of what the statement said is that there is unity within the ANC. Can you look us in the eye as the country and say, indeed, hand in heart, there's unity within the ANC? Well, I don't swear like that, hand in heart. I do a cross. Okay, cross that. Yeah, but I don't think that uh, there's anything that suggests to me that uh, there's no unity in the ANC. You see, uh, 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 Baba Kwan, you must not say when we debate issues, there's this unity. You must, we are a very robust organization. We're a democratic organization. And we are like a church, broad church with different views. Some people are communists, others are Christians. I mean, I, I mean, it's a mixture of people. And that's how the omnibus the NC is. Now, I've experienced that whenever we have these heated exchanges, people say, oh, it must be because he supports Malema or it's against Malema. You know that type of thing. We easily, you easily pigeonhole us because we hold a view on an issue. We will debate. We'll, we'll differ, we'll agree. At the end, we'll come to decisions and they'll bind us. But the difference is that the ANC tells us every time that these discussions must take place within, uh, inside the ANC, within certain parameters. Let me take your example. Just this year, two press statements have been issued uh, rebuking some of the comments that you made. There was one earlier on in the year uh, uh, rebuking a statement that you had made about the uh, about Julius Malema, that he's worried about the disciplinary process, but actually there's no dustbin for ANC comrades. That was very public. Again, then over the weekend, we read about a statement that had been issued by the ANC, but it was uh, of subsequently after your complaint, it was um, stopped from publishing. So in other words, these issues are very public. They are no longer within the internal parameters of the ANC. But, but, well, let's not mislead the listeners. There's no statement issued by the ANC over the weekend. What happened there... One of our officials, uh, who, who I don't want to mention by name, is young, I need him to grow in the party, uh, was involved in soliciting an article from a, a person who I don't know even today. Mm. And I think you saw what Jackson said. He said it's improper. And of course, we, I also expressed myself in a negative way because it was improper. So it's not an NC statement. So let's remove that. Let's go back to let's the first one. Let's go to the first one. The first one, you remember, I refused to comment. You mm-hmm. remember? Mm. Because there were different statements. And at the end of the day, uh, the SG said, we are calling ourselves to order, all of us. That is on record. Mm. So I still co- won't comment about it now. Because it became a, a statement and, and a statement with an S at the end. But the point, the reason why I'm raising this is that even within the ANC's top six, there are those public divisions about how to handle matters. No, no, it's not divisions. It's a debate. And we, if we differ, we, <laughs> we're not robots, we're not zombies. Mm. There are areas where we'll differ, and I think it's healthy. Mm. But we must differ primarily within the party, where, especially where there's a decision. Mm. But we do make public pronouncements on public platforms. Mm. And in most cases, we are supposed to keep the party line. But where you go off, 
I think the leadership is entitled to call you to order. If you go off, mm. and none of us is above criticism in the party, none of us. Mm. All right, let, let me let me start with Ralph. Ralph, thanks, uh, Kolani. You know, I, I, when I look at the press conference yesterday, I think it comes against the environment where there has been a lot of talking outside the ANC as a political party. We have seen in the past few weeks. Uh, uh, the centenary lectures and gatherings also uh, involving some senior members of the ANC uh, where they were physically present in some of those gatherings and utterances were made and uh, to some extent you can say those platforms have been used by the ANC Youth League uh, to fight its own political battles but this waging of the political battles is happening outside uh, 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 the framework of the ANC and I think that the need to call for the top six press conference yesterday to some extent was meant to address the situation where you want to maintain that sense that there is still a center within the ANC and that center does hold. And I want to emphasize that what I saw yesterday for me was a show of unity and an emphasis being a show of unity thereof. Because if you look at the communication about the ANC as a political party, a lot has been coming outside than from inside. And I think there was a need, in my view, to have that sense of responding from uh, showing that 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 level of unity from inside to balance and also to to, to counter the flow of information happening mm. and I emphasize a show. I want to repeat again, it is a show of unity. The individuals who attended the press conference there, including Mr. Poza, mm. they are individuals. And they are still going to uh, show up in uh, the, the centenary celebration and so other words, public forums. Way, let, me, let me push with this. Uh, push. Uh, are you saying that what we saw is different from the reality? It is different from the reality. And I want to emphasize, we live in the world of media. A show... It's in some circumstances is as important as substance, mm. and I think they had to display a show of unity. Though. It's very necessary that they do that. But what is going to be seen, I think, or what stand to be seen is how they are going to behave outside that, as they are going to, uh, 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 you know, enjoy the freedom of speech in those centenary cele- uh, celebration. Right. But I, 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 if I were to uh, uh, put Mr. Poza on the corner there, I was going to ask, uh, you, you know, uh, where do we? draw the boundary what happened at that is it from within or is it outside the ANC as that I mean the, the, the audience of course is the is the is, is the student body there that were being addressed but the question it becomes very difficult for us to understand these speeches and some of these utterances and also the quietism in responding to some of the utterances by the youth league members whether yeah. that should be understood in the context of something within the party or is it outside the party well, I think uh, 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 Mr. Mataka is quite right, you know, but I think um, we have shown the unity. And I want to assure you and the listeners, it's a reality. We, d- we don't sit there and as your officials and uh, are aware that we differ on any ideological issue. I don't know of any where I differ from anybody. And I, I mean, we, we agree on everything. We may express ourselves in different language on different subject matters. But I'm saying it's neither here nor there. And uh, I wouldn't be in a corner if you were to ask me uh, whether this was outside or inside the NC. You see, Mr. Mateja, what happens is you are a member of the NC, it doesn't matter where you are. Mm. And you take the same responsibility which you should take as a leader, whether you are at VET or anywhere else. You cannot you cannot undress your ANC-ness in, at, that, at that stage. So we take full responsibility. That's why when those things were being said, it was important to go out of the written speech and add more, but not in a reckless way. The SG used the word the edge to respond. I don't think I, I, I respond on edge. I'm a thinking human being. I respect on reflection. And on reflection, I said, what would be best for the audience in front of me? Not just for Malema. You understand? But we're together, we're an audience. We're engaging each other. And they must learn from their leader too. Professor? I think one of the issues we have to deal with here is constraint evaluation of government because when we do evaluations of government and policies and when it's done inside ANC it is construed as evaluation of leaders which probably it is but evaluation of leaders have become prohibited space because the succession struggle in ANC is not supposed to be debated and I think this is the root of the problem we're talking about today that there isn't open debate that there isn't campaigning one cannot have nominations for ANC leadership in October and say the campaign starts in October internal democracy 
democracy does have a campaign period, and that is currently precluded. And so this is really a maelstrom and a pressure cooker, where many of these issues that are coming up, and Julius Malema and preoccupation, quote unquote, with Malema, that happens because that is often the only expression of campaigning that is brazen, is brazen and in your face and very often inaccurate and inappropriate. But that is a form of contestation that bubbles to the surface at this stage because there is this prohibition on campaigning in the ANC. And that right. is also just one little point. <coughs> why one could look at the top six at the ANC yesterday at this media briefing and think that but there is some credibility lacking because we know there is wherever one goes in the ANC and talks in the ANC, whatever level, people are talking about leadership and succession and they want to match policy issues, policy defenses, policy implementation hmm. with leaders. What are, can different leaders do better? And that is a constrained, okay. prohibited space at this point. L- let's get responses from, from, from Dr. Posa. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the Professor um, S- Suzanne, as I know her for a long time, the political commentator, <laughs> is uh, entitled to her views. We, we have said that um, we are not against leaders being assessed. And they, they must be assessed by the branches of the NC. They must be assessed by whoever wants to assess them. And then you, th- that assessment is taking place in the papers. Marcella writes long articles every day, every Monday, about the President Zuma. Mm. And there's talk back shows. Leaders are being assessed. And we must all be assessed. Mm. You know, on whether or not we're doing the right thing, we represent the proper uh, positions of the movement. There's nothing wrong with that. But the ANC is entitled to say, when do we start nominating? Now, we have not stifled a discussion. You, if you look online, there's mm. so many lists of nominations of the top six. Mm. It's not about the whole NEC. Mm. It's, it's like the, the NEC is the top six, but there's a, the preoccupation is the top six. I've seen four different versions of nominations. It's play around with people's names. You can't stop people from thinking. Mm. You can't stop people from doing what they're doing online today. The world has moved on. Mm. But what is the status of those activities? It's the democratic engagement mm. by, by people who want to, to do that. The day we give them a nomination form and they nominate, mm. it's a valid nomination by the NC. At the moment, we have not given anybody a nomination form, but we have not stifled anybody. We have said it's not the right time to nominate. Yeah, but here's we, 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 we have not yeah. said it's not the right time to discuss leadership. Yeah, but here's the thing, and, and this may seem as a contradiction. If the ANC allows people to assess leadership, then the ANC must allow people to ultimately say, this is my view about that leader. If Floyd Shibambo Mm. wants then to say, as a result of my assessment, I don't think President Jacob Zuma will be re-elected, then he should be free. Gwede Mandashe mustn't say that he has committed a transgression. Well, let me tell you, the ANC has got its own rules. It's got its own traditions. But if it's it, democracy... No, no, I'm saying... Yeah. I'm saying you can go to the U.S. The Republicans do their thing, the Republicans, the way they do them. The Democrats, they do it the, same, the way they want to do it. The ANC will do things in terms of its own constitution. Why should it go outside its constitution? Yeah, but uh, you see, I'm linking this point to the earlier point about freedom to assess leadership. If we are free to assess leadership in public then naturally we are free to come to conclusions and those conclusions mustn't be seen as transgressions. No, no. You have a point. It should not be transgressions. But we should not shift focus of the movement away from what we say is priority in this case. We are saying we've got a policy conference coming in June. And, you know, there's a lot of things to be discussed affecting the lives of South Africans. And we want to, in a disciplined way, focus the mind of our cadres on the policy conference. But it's about the future of the country. It's not about just the ANC. It's about society. So if we don't lead, then uh, we'll be led. Hmm. And we say we want to lead. We want to lead our members. This is the focus. After this, we must build towards the elective conference, right? Then we we have indicated when in that build-up they can nominate. Professor is saying an issue of credibility because you, you choose leadership that will carry through the policies. There is a link between policies and leadership. But we're discussing the policies now. So when we should finish, it be the other way around, Professor? When, when we finish, <laughs> no, wait, 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 yeah. when we time. finish discussing the policies, yeah. that is between June yeah. and, and, and and December. Yeah. You can say which leadership <laughs> matches that, Prof. If one goes that route, yeah. one assumes that all leaders in the ANC are equally capable of 
filling in those exactly needed spaces where policy renewal and change is required. We Then we would assume that the ANC, all leaders, have got equal ability to command the state apparatus and cut out um, nonsense and mismanagement in various corners of it. But there are an inequalities in that respect amongst ANC leaders. Some, we all believe, are truly more capable of doing that than others. Mm. Some come with new policy ideas. But for now, it's assumed the ANC is this one homogenous policy entity driving engine. And it isn't like that. Mm. But no one has said that. You're making and an is the assumption uh, no, no, if one it's a says... False it's a, it's a false assumption. No. There's no political party in this country. Give me another one which opens its leadership uh, processes like ours. Give me another political party in this country which opens its policy formulation discussions like the NC. Mm. Give me another political party. What you are That's asking? another the, point. Yeah. The NC is unique in that sense. It opens up is thinking to the society and say, let's debate policy on economy, on society, on everything.